How many of you would like to have a better memory? How many of you have already forgotten the question? <laughs> How many of you would like to be more innovative, more creative? Okay. It's really interesting, but the process of memory and the process of innovation and creativity is exactly the same, just a little difference of degree. So let me make a definition here. Creativity is making something new that hasn't existed before. Innovation is taking something and changing it. So it can do a new job, so it can do the same thing even better. And the reason this is important, change is very rapid, and if you're not innovating, you're falling behind. So I'm going to give you some examples about innovation and how that works, and we can all have a good time with this. So here is what happens. Have you ever had this kind of experience? You're talking to a bunch of people, maybe you're talking to friends, maybe you're at work and you're telling a story. You're really into it. And then you say, you know, and then this woman came up, you know, uh, oh, what's her name again? You know, she's tall, oh man, got long blonde hair, married to that big guy, he works at the electric company, I know that name. They have three boys, really into soccer. Oh, gee. Well, anyway, you go ahead, you tell your story. 20 minutes later, you sit back and suddenly you say, it's Lisa. How many of you have done that sort of thing? Okay, it's very common. And... We learned four things from this. There are four things to memory and to innovation and creativity. The first thing we learned is you can do two things at once. Your conscious mind is telling the story, really into it. Your subconscious mind is going through the file cards of your brain looking for that name. And the second thing we learned is you have to tell it what it really wants. I'm looking for this name, look for that. And then we also, the third thing we have to do, we have to give it reference points. We have to give it pieces of the puzzle so the subconscious mind can sort through these pieces and come up with the answer. Now, the other thing we have to do is relax the conscious mind. Give the subconscious mind a chance to work. As long as the conscious mind is active, it will suppress the subconscious mind. It might come up with the answer, and if we're stressing or we're thinking about something else, you won't ever get the answer. So you've got to take the conscious mind offline. Now, there are different ways to do that, getting the conscious mind offline. One way is in a dream. There's a lot of examples of people who've had creative ideas in a dream. They work on it a lot, they do really hard, and then in the dream they're offline and they get the answer. Mendeleev discovered the organization of the periodic table in a dream. Paul McCartney woke up one morning with a melody running through his mind. He got up and he played it. It turned into the song, Yesterday. So you can go offline by dreaming. Uh, I'm a hypnotherapist, you can go offline in hypnosis, pretty effective. You can also go offline by daydreaming. It's very effective. Sometimes hard to explain to your boss, but uh, it's very effective. And the other way to go offline is to do something physical that happens to be automatic. Go for a walk. Go for a long walk. Dig weeds in the yard. Vacuum the floor. Do some ironing. I'm talking to the men here now. <laughs> so you have to go offline before you can let that innovation come through. And it may take a while. It may take more than 20 minutes. You may have to go back and do more research to put more facts into the brain to say, search here as well. And once we've got that, we have to weave that into our daily life. And in our daily life, We've got two things to learn. That's all. It's that simple. What works and what doesn't. And we've got two things to do. More of what works, less of what doesn't. And you might have learned that doing more of what doesn't work doesn't work. But there's also only two ways you can ever fail. 
The first way is you don't do anything. If you don't do anything, you can't learn if it worked or not. And the second way is to do something and it doesn't work, but you don't learn the lesson. There's two ways to decide if you've learned the lesson. Do you blame somebody else? You haven't learned it. Do you make excuses? You haven't learned it. You've got to own it. And when you own it, there's no way that you can fail. It's all a big experiment. It's an experiment to find out what works and what doesn't, and you keep moving forward. So I'd like to say that innovation isn't something out there. Innovation isn't something other people do. Innovation is a part of you. And I encourage you to let it out. I encourage you to shout it out. Don't be afraid to do it. And then you hope somebody's listening. There are some companies that are very open to innovation. They have policies and procedures. They're going to create ways for you to get your ideas out and they're going to try it. They're going to work on it. Other companies have policies and procedures that actively get in the way of innovation. So how do we move a company that resists innovation to become one that innovates? How do we do that? And the really basic question is, why do we want to do it? And the why again is this. If you're not innovating, you're falling behind. Thank you.